So today, I thought we could open a scroller box. <laughs> One, because I really want to film, and two, because I don't have any actual ideas. And this just arrived, so what perfect timing. I think I get them a month late, which would make this the June box. Let's go ahead and pull the little thing that says pull. Find out what's inside and uh, make something with it. How did I get two months behind? I have no words. Well, I'm sure they still work just fine. It's not a big problem. Let's see what's in here though. Black currant? Black currant and licorice. Mm. Can't say I've ever tried that before. Also in the box there is the Derwent line maker. It's a size 0.8, so it's gonna be a pretty bold line. And I always like pens that have a little window for the nib so he can experience the world too. Justice for nibs. Now is this paint or is it ink? Okay, you don't prime the nib, so I'm guessing it's just a very thick pen. There's also this very teeny little paintbrush. Oh, it's got nothing written on it. I was just like gonna spin that continuously. Oh, it's super, ew, it's kind of gooey. Usually brushes come with a, with some coating on them just to protect the bristles and you're supposed to like open it up like that. Hopefully I was supposed to do that, but it's like a kind of a bushy round brush. Not sure how I else I would describe that. We also have the scroller sticker. Kind of looks like a rose, maybe colored pencil. Does that mean there are colored pencils in here? Exclusive color selection for Scrawler Box. <gasps> Posca pencil. <laughs> That's actually more fun to say than Posca pen. I need my knife. Where's my knife? <laughs> now my hopes and dreams for like a Posca pencil. I, I know these exist, but I've never actually, have I tried them before? If I have, they did not leave any sort of impression, but I definitely have seen like YouTube thumbnails where they're like, Posca pencils, Posca pencils, yeah. But my hope and dream for a Posca pencil would be a perfectly opaque white pencil that draws on every surface. Those might be some high demands, but let's see what we're working with. So we have light orange, that's this guy. Blue green, that's this guy. Gray, hey, that would have come in handy a couple weeks ago. Fuchsia, love that. I just like that color name. Blue, very unique name there. And finally, lilac. So I wonder if they work more like a chalk pencil, more like a colored pencil. I guess I'll know once I start using them. <laughs> There's the menu. Oh, I was just looking at the menu and I was like, something's missing. And I lifted this to move it out of the way. And when I dropped it, it made a noise. It's so cute. So small. Pearl burnish San Francisco liquid white colored pencil. Shake well. This sounds like everything I was describing in a Posca pencil. I'm excited to try that. Liquid white colored pencil. Hmm. Is there anything else? Oh, there's also paper in here and then squall- <laughs> Squaller. <laughs> and the challenge prompt word is secret garden. Here's the scrawler zine. Got more of those. Honestly, it looks like some kind of bush that was colored purple. Oh, my favorite page. Reminds me of my thumbnails. I know what I like, okay? The artist's name is Safana. And they actually created this? <laughs> Fascinating. Ooh, the tips, the tips. So they recommend putting the liquid pencil on top of the pencil because it absorbs into the paper and becomes less stark. So you wanna have like a lot of pencil underneath of it. All right, so some flowers they recommend. Red roses, the sunflower, the water lily, and the poppy. Oh dang, look, that was what the sticker is. Look how cool that is. I love that. <sighs> all right, all right. Oh, oh, it's up there the whole time. They gave us a print. Eee! Okay, that is going on the wall. The last thing in the box is a little pad of paper. A size is A5. There are 16 sheets. As you can hear, produced exclusively for Scroller Box again. Exciting, by Claire Fontaine. And I guess the brand Goldline. Having an identity crisis. Not sure which one it's for. Let me quickly grab my sketchbook though. We can swatch the supplies. Please pardon the Stegosauruses. Should we do it in like a rainbow order? This is the fuchsia. Ooh, that goes on smooth. Nice. I just like the way it feels. I've been using more um, Crayola colored pencils lately and they're not that smooth. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't have a lot of like colored pencil knowledge, but I can tell you these are smoother than a Crayola. They seem really opaque too. Like it doesn't require too much pressure and they're almost crayon-like. 
The gray one is almost less smooth, more graphite -y. I don't know if that makes any sense. You're supposed to be able to like smudge them. Ooh, they are kind of like waxy. Let's try to create a little gradient. Mmm. It's almost like it lifts and smudges the color underneath of it. The more you layer it, like the shinier it seems to get. Interesting. Try the Derwent Line Maker. I remember having one of these in like a orange color. Ooh, I like that. Can this go over top of the pencil? Looks like it can. I don't know why I'm labeling them so obtrusively. Now we have the paintbrush and our little liquid white. Can you just tell how teeny tiny this is? <laughs> like here I have my smallest Posca pen. Takes up less real estate, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, let's open this up. You're supposed to shake it, so I'm gonna stir it a little. Let me just use this to draw on top just to see what it looks like. It does remind me of maybe white acrylic paint. Unlike paint, colored pencils cannot always be easily layered over and over, with lighter colors often not holding enough pigment when used as a top layer. With this liquid pencil, you can intensify or create white areas without having to sacrifice any pigmentation. Does that mean you can't layer a colored pencil on acrylic paint? That does seem like a thing that would probably happen. <laughs> or it wouldn't work, I mean. Should I taste this on camera? That's just not a pleasant color for a candy. This is... How long has this been in your grandma's purse? purple. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just odd. Because like the licorice and then there's like a berry flavor in there. I can see me consuming that if I wasn't about to talk through a video. <laughs> okay, we've got these papers. They're telling us to try and draw flowers of some kind. I was actually, <laughs> before filming this, working on one of my stories and there's a part in the story where a character, whenever they come into contact with like plant life, it kills it, but slowly. And it like gives life to that character. I don't know if these colors will work, but it would be kind of interesting to try and draw something like that. I don't know if I should grab a pencil. I have this blue colorized pencil sitting here, but what I'm picturing is sort of like more like tropical plants. Then how would I draw them looking like they're sort of decaying though? Well, like when plants shrivel up, they kind of get all like bent up and like, you know, like that. <laughs> so maybe just things need to be more wiggly and kind of curled. Well, then I guess it would kind of rely on the colors too, and like soggy. <laughs> It's kind of sad. And this tree, I guess we'll have it like sort of rotting out, like blackened, I guess, at the bottom. The leaves probably would just have fallen out of a palm tree. Maybe there's like one, they're just sort of droopy. Well, just drew some dead plants. Now I feel like an awful human being. You also really can't see it. I definitely don't. I don't even have a green to draw a fresh plant to show the contrast of a dead plant, but I'll, I'll use the colors I have to just kind of see. So this will be like an alive plant back here and maybe on this side. And then as we reach these, they'd kind of look more dead. And our blue doesn't really work. We just switch to gray. I mean, I know when like plants die, they kind of turn brown. So we could maybe use a little bit of these. Maybe purple? Okay, they look a little less dead now. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of the fun colors. It makes it look like, uh, I don't know, prehistoric for some reason. I'm not sure where I'm getting that idea. Well, while it's here, give it a little bit of color. I really like how easily the colors go down with these pencils. Blend that out. Kind of get it pretty smooth. Like it doesn't just sit there. Look at that, like if you push really hard. Blush. Alright, after the slight detour, I am actually quite interested in the idea of like coloring some tropical plants because I feel like they look good with the blues and the purple. That color scheme is inspiring to me, so I think I'll jump and find a reference of some kind. Well, let's try and do something without a reference first. Why not? Maybe it'll turn out. You never know. Now my preference is definitely I want to draw alive things. So I could even just color in that scene. That one doesn't seem too bad. Let's reverse it. Let's put the little palm tree here. Do a little curve for some interest. Didn't quite fit that into there. And down here, maybe we could put like something to kind of like create a border on the edges. We could even put a little pond or something. Maybe a coconut. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but now it's got a coconut. Taller ones. Something, someplace like a dinosaur could live, you know? Maybe some little tall blades of grass in the background. It could be a cute little scene, depending on how I end up coloring it. I'm gonna start with the light orange for like the bark of whatever. I don't know, is it called bark? Of this tree. Maybe use a little bit of the blue-green for some shading there. And I'm gonna decide that shading's going on the far right of everything. Blend it out with the orange again. Well, 
scared me. <laughs> I was so intent on this. I'm gonna use blue green and a little bit of the lilac for the leaves up here. I feel like that looks cool. So then this one would be more purple because it's kind of further in the background. I haven't decided if there's like a gradient or if it's shading. Probably should make up my mind though. <laughs> Maybe leave this one all blue green. Maybe a little tiny bit of purple fuchsia on the coconuts. A little bit of the blue. And then all we have left is green, gray, so layer that too. Pretty dark. What about blue again? Oh no, I'm the light one. It's gonna need to be sharpened soon. Now I'm gonna color the ones in the front first because I'm not entirely sure which ones are in the front. Because if I color in the ones in the back first, then they're gonna look like they're in front of the front ones because I'll have already have colored them. Does that make sense? I like these gradients of the blue, green, the blue, the lilac. Grab those and let's create some of that. The lilac. Definitely a different look. Maybe just some straight up purple. Ooh, maybe purple the fuchsia ones here. I guess we're just kind of figuring out the color scheme for the most part. It leaves blue green for like the grass. All right, how's this? Need a gradient on that one. It's getting too close to this other purple plant. How's that look for a no reference sort of scene? <laughs> Need the background. If I kind of color in this with more of the fuchsia, I might be able to make the background orange. I don't know if that'll look good, but it's a thing I can do. So why don't we try it? <laughs> That's not gonna work. I was like, can I just color it in like that? I guess not. Can't be lazy about this, but I'm sure I'll find a way. That looks like a nice warm scene. Wanna go there? Could even kind of fade to this color at the top. Give it more of that like sunset vibe. And then it's brighter at the bottom. Okay, I do like the color scheme. I think it's fun. I also think it needs way more plants. It looks a little uh, sparse. That liquid pencil's pretty much dried. Can I layer over top of it? Nope, it just removed it. Okay, not dry enough, clearly. I'll just sharpen you though. We have to fill in some of the gaps. I like using them to create little gradients of color and the color scheme that they gave me is not one that I've, I don't think I've ever used before. So it's really cool seeing it in action. I didn't use the gray really, did I? Where could we, eh, maybe that's not something I want. It's too desaturated for the rest of it. We also have the line. Wow, this draws on top of these pencils really well. I feel like a lot of like the waxy stuff you can't really draw on top of. Maybe draw a little mouse. <laughs> I don't know, it needed something. Oh, it's still kind of wet, is it? Ooh, just gotta wait it out. You know what I don't have? I don't have any like the big rounded leaf plants. Mess that up a bit. I will grab some references though. You may have noticed this, but I'm definitely having a lot more fun lately recreating references than kind of drawing my own thing. It's just what's been calling me. I'm gonna search tropical flower and see if there's something we can kind of play around with. Okay, nothing's really, hmm, nothing's getting me. We do have a lot of paper here, so I might just kind of start doing something. And if I like it, I'll keep doing it. If I don't, we'll just grab a new piece of paper. Do I keep it in here? Well, just took that off. Cool. There's references of like a bunch of different things, but there's nothing really in like a cool composition that's calling me. So I guess I'll just wing it. Let's start with blue green and draw in some like leaves of some kind. Something that like has a stem and then it's very large. Maybe something here that's like a fern or has those like these like little skinny leaves on it. I kind of ran out of space. Well, we got more paper. It's fine. We need some kind of flower here. Is that too many petals? Don't ask me what kind of flower that is. <laughs> it's an imaginary one. Maybe some kind of berry with something bobbly on the end of it. Like popcorn. Kind of like, I don't know, create a scene. <laughs> Maybe another flower behind here. Kind of seems weird to have a flower behind a leaf though. We may not do that in the next one. And then maybe one more of these big leaves since they seem to just take over a lot of space. Maybe some more of that. Yeah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> it looks kind of cool. All right, let's play around with colors and then maybe we can figure out how to do the colors the way I want it. We can make a really cool next one. Kind of create gradients. I think for the flower, let's focus on like the more reddish and orangish tones. We'll start with this in the center here. Gradient outwards. This fuchsia is one of the deepest ones we've got. Maybe turn to purple at the tip. Okay, this paper is a bit rougher than my sketchbook. Creating a different texture. I don't know if you can see a difference, but I can. Look, I like that. So then we have like a sort of pink flower with a little bit of purple on the tips of the petals. 
Ooh, you can kind of see the difference in that color before and after you layer the orange on it. This is when I'm starting to feel it in the wrist. Be a little extra of this on top of where there's more shadowy bits. And there's a flower. And then we'll use more of the like greens and the blues. I guess they're both blue <laughs> for the plant. A little gradient to the greener blue. Now I need to create a little separation between that. So we'll just kind of color that one in a little darker. Okay, now this one. Oh wait, I didn't color this guy in. Wait, one second. Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe the blue to purple. We'll have purple at this part. Let's see how this is going to separate us from that back leaf there. Using this different hue. Layer the first one down. Maybe I won't have to push so hard if I just layer a couple light layers. Does that look like a leaf? It's a little patchy. Definitely looks separate from that. But it also just seems a little too purple. <laughs> Hate to say it. A little fuchsia in here. I keep getting surprised how well they actually blend. And like, it's not like they're blending like a super blendy art supply, but they're way blendier than most colored pencils I've used. <laughs> okay, so I just added a little fuchsia to the center because this leaf's gonna need to be a different color than that leaf, but this leaf's close to this, which has a lot of fuchsia in it. So I decided to add some fuchsia there. That's the thought process anyway. I might put some green blue on this. Sure, it's gonna look more like those other guys, but it's such a different shape, but maybe that's fine. Get those gradients. Blend out those lines. Can't tell if this looks good or not. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Maybe use this color for this last flower down here. Now that I've done that, I feel like it needs more fuchsia somewhere. Maybe just a little bit of this. Now we have one last leaf and whatever these things are gonna be. <laughs> also just might add leaves, plants, I don't know, for the composition. I'm gonna have some fuchsia, but I'll probably layer it with something as well. Does that create a gradient? Is that a gradient? What combo have we not done yet? Have I not done just the light or the blue-green? Don't love that. Don't love it. Maybe another fuchsia one. So, what's the verdict here? It's kind of cool. Definitely the composition needs work. Colors, they're still doing something for me, but I'm not sure I've got them right. I think my favorite parts are like the ones with like the sharper, more hollowed cuts. I don't know, does that make sense? I definitely would like this a lot better if it didn't touch the top, but we will try it again. Why don't we flip the landscape? Maybe we just need a little change of orientation. Oh, we still haven't done that. Maybe we should do that first so that it can dry. Some little highlights. Not a lot of control when you're using a squeezy nib. Where's that paintbrush? Okay, there's no way this is gonna be useful. If I want to use that, I'm gonna need to find my own paintbrush. We'll let that dry and then maybe we can layer on top of it and do better than last time when it just chipped off. Anyway, back to this. Do like one of those like fan palms. Do they look like this or something. <laughs> trying to think of the composition, you know, as a whole. Maybe some big leaf. I think that's called like a banana leaf. Kind of like fill in some of the space. And then we need some kind of flower. Do I just wing it? Maybe one here, like a big one. Oh, I want to do any of these kind of funny things. Maybe here. I didn't check to see if Posca's were erasable. My guess would be that they're not. <laughs> Actually, those could go on top of that boring banana leaf. I don't know. Let's try this one. I'm thinking to start with a little bit of this on the background for this fan. I just need to kind of radiate outwards, don't they? Ooh, I kind of like the way that looks. It's like a blue zebra hiding back there. <laughs> Grab the blue green. Coloring these jelly beans. Okay, they're like my favorite because they don't take a lot of effort and they fill a lot of space. Could do this big front flower next. Fill it in with the orange. Seems to work as a base. I like a song. Add in a little fuchsia. And then I might color the edges of the flowers in the fuchsia as well. Maybe these little things. Hey, that looks like a little flower. Look at it. I wonder if the tips could be like a little purple. Not super visible, just like just enough for like a little tiny hue shift. Blend it out. I do like that. That turned out good. All right, I'm having second thoughts about the other things that I've sketched. At least their placement. Maybe if I shrink down the flower a little, so the center's here. I'll do the same thing with the fuchsia. There we go. Now I kind of want an extra one right here. Why not? Maybe I'm ruining it, but it feels like it's the right decision. Getting better drawing these flowers. Or maybe just quicker. <laughs> maybe not better. <laughs> we'll add another fan here though. Maybe right here. Can I fill that in? It's looking good. Maybe it just needs a little purple. I don't know. Whatever these things are. <laughs> maybe two of these down here too. 
I think it's an improvement over this one. I like that it has less different plants, but I feel like I could do better. Thought we'll definitely do another one. For the next one, I think what I'm gonna do is just like a mixture of these same, I don't know, plants, I guess. Maybe throw in one of the more leafy looking ones. What I think I don't like about this one is that all the leaves are pointing in the same kind of general direction, whereas if one was like poked outwards, it would be more, I don't know, visually interesting. But let's try another one. I think this time I'm not gonna sketch. I kind of just wanna try adding in the flowers where they look good and then adding in like the other stuff where it looks good. Just try some different. What I'm thinking is one here and then I wanna follow that same like three flower pattern. So like one's gonna be big here, there'll be a little one up here but not behind and then another one like here we'll just see what happens start with the petals i think i was doing five yes i was and i was thinking one up here but now there's not really that much room compositionally if i want it to all kind of fit inside about this circle so maybe instead i'll put one here <laughs> i don't do like these cluster things let me just add fluffy shapes maybe something that's just like a bunch of little dots to add some more round shapes that's getting a little too close. I might just bring all of these down. Maybe these are those like purple ones. But I think I need something. <laughs> something needs to go here. It feels like. Maybe just another one of those, but upside down. I don't know. They look like they're supposed to be connected, but not. So maybe I can like curl this one more this way. And they're not like heading towards each other. I don't know. Okay. Now we'll color in the flowers. That nice base layer of the light orange. Maybe I'll do that. I'll just go and add in like the lightest base layer of everything first. Looks like a little football. Then you add in the little leaves. And I guess I use blue for this fan thing. Make sure they actually look kind of rounded. I feel like we need something blue over here. Maybe I'll do the little circles. I don't know what they are, but they're blue. So now there's like a nice little variety of like thin lines, thicker lines, and then these like huge petals, as well as tiny little circles. Okay, now I need to start adding in more of the gradients. Grab the fuchsia and start with the flower because that's kind of my favorite thing to do. That might be obvious. I have a poke out in the center and then it jets in a little bit. Go back over that with orange, but pushing much harder to blend it out. You know what? What about that, um, this? <laughs> Uh, melts. Would that come in handy here? Does that make it blend more? I mean, it says it only works with specific brands, but this is the whole bean colored pencil blender. This came in, uh, what was it? A powerful box box or something? Come on. Nothing happening. Yeah, it's kind of like turning it into watercolor. Still don't like this paintbrush one bit. I don't think this is much use to anyone. Can't say it's like that much better than just doing what I was doing. Just go back to plan A. Well, you can tell it's smoother. It kind of like lifts it a bit and makes the transition softer, but it's still not like an exaggerated amount that I deem worth it. Oh no, it bled onto here. Will I be able to color over this? Yeah, I will rip up the paper. We will come back to that part. Okay, that's this flower. Kind of draw in that center of the flower. I had little things kind of coming out from here. To make it look more tropical. Ooh, now that I'm looking at these two together, I like this one better. Do we want some of these? Woo! And then we'll work on that little fern thing up here. Start by darkening it up and blending it with the blue one. This spot's tricky because it goes behind the flower petal. A little shadow with the blue, maybe. Alright, it's looking a little fuller. A little fuller. This is nearly dry. Can I just... Yes, I can. There we go. Kind of destroyed the paper a bit, so we'll be avoiding the melts here on out. Let's add in the fan. Alright, I was gonna make that one purple. I also feel like the fan needs some kind of color shift. Should I do fuchsia? Just to kind of show the stem a little better, because you can't really see it. And add in these little guys. There's a little purple. I'm just trying something like a shadow. And some purple dots, some fuchsia dots. Maybe take the purple and kind of just fill in some of these, this white space. Make it look like there's something back there. Should we try one more? Let's do one final portrait. It's gonna include some of those flowers, so I hope you're not bored of them. Let's do the big one on the right side this time, because, ooh, what if they have skinnier petals? I just need to fill back here with something. Buy one of these, because I like those. That doesn't really leave us any room for anything else though, does it? Could add another flower. Just a bunch of them all over the place. I mean, it's different than any of the other ones we did, so we'll just, we'll try it. Oh, I can feel myself getting lazy. Look how I'm rushing this. There's a flower. I've got a couple little ones up here. 
I might make one of these flowers a different color. A little purpley. Oh, I forgot this. Didn't this come with a pen? <laughs> Not sure what I would use that for. It's blank. It's gonna be a little stark. So we got like a little purple flower up there. I'm thinking this one will have to be purple too. I'm gonna start with purple and then layer the orange and see how that looks. Then the orange looks a little gray. Okay, that's four. We have two more. One really big one and then a little tiny one. Maybe this little one will be purple. Okay, we have one more flower and then we get to do the little fern thing in the background, which will hopefully tie everything together. Although I gotta say, I kind of just like the way this looks. <laughs> Change my mind. I don't really want to be doing this right now. <laughs> Watch me really like the way this one turns out and change my mind again. Artist brain, man, it just hops all over the place. Need this one. It's almost like a triangle or something. It gets like longer in the center, shorter on the sides. Create even more dimension. I like that. We'll just throw a little bit of that on all of them. So close. Just add a little fuchsia. Okay, all we have left is that thing in the background. The green blue is for the stem. The blue green. Forget the little gradient. Make it as symmetrical as possible. A little tricky drawing these behind the flowers, but I'll do it just for you. <laughs> I just noticed this is curving, so these ones need to be a little longer. Okay, what do we think of this? Can you tell I got a little lazy? <laughs> well, I think this might be my favorite. I can't tell. Oh, I don't know. They're all kind of, they like on par with each other. Well, no, the first one is the worst. First is the worst, as they say. Honestly, they kind of just look nice as companion pieces. I think that's meant to be how they are enjoyed together. If we look back at the uh, liquid watercolor, it kind of soaked up the color that was underneath of it and became less white. It's more like a, like on top of a fuchsia. It kind of became a manila color. It's like an off-white. Looks like as it dries, it kind of loses its brightness. Maybe that's the word, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I kind of just like, <laughs> kind of just like the Posca branding. I don't know what it is. It brings me joy. It's not even a rainbow. It's like a primary, don't ask me. <laughs> we didn't use this guy. This guy got no love, sorry. This really. No, I'm not gonna destroy something by trying to have that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I tried out the new Posca pencils. Said it. Without a pause in the middle. If you want to check out this artist, their Instagram is Art by Safana. And they also have a website. Big thank you to Scrawler Box for sending this box my way to try out and to share with you guys. I'll have a link in the description for more information. See you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!